For several years during the Revolutionary War, Native American tribes fought in tandem with British forces against the colonial army, desperately attempting to safeguard their ancestral land from the ever-growing onslaught of Western expansion by the colonials. The British supplied weapons and fortifications to the Native Americans during this time, but with General Cornwallis's defeat at Yorktown, support for the war faded in both British Parliament and the public. England agreed to begin peace negotiations with the Americans to end the Revolutionary War, but the British continued to supply Native American forces, urging them to continue protecting their homeland, leading them to battle just outside of modern-day Toledo, Ohio. This is the story of the Battle of Fallen Timbers, a battle that is a turning point for Native Americans in their relationship with the British and their fight to save their ancestral land. So if you're curious, let's take a walk through history. England's signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1783 formally recognized American independence and ceded most British territory east of the Mississippi River to the United States, essentially doubling the size of the new nation and paving the way for westward expansion. There was one very big problem, though. During the Revolutionary War, many Native American nations sided with the British. This would prove problematic during the Treaty of Paris negotiations. The U.S. viewed Great Britain as proper negotiators on behalf of the nations. This, however, failed to account for the fact that tribes viewed themselves as independent nations, not beholden to the British, French, or Americans, nor even to other Native American nations. Another problem was the British still had settlements and military forts scattered throughout the territory and were supplying Native Americans with weapons and supplies, urging them to stay put and not give up their lands to the U.S. President George Washington had intended to settle the Northwest Territory with Revolutionary War veterans, giving them land as compensation for their service. To combat the settlers pushing further into their homelands, a formidable fighting force of Native Americans formed. This intertribal alliance, the Northwestern Confederacy, included members from across the entire Great Lakes region. The tribes that contributed the most warriors were the Wyandotte, Miami, Shawnee, Ottawa, and Delaware. By the end of 1784, violent attacks were commonplace in the Northwest Territory, with both native and settler blood being spilled. With the United States having made little progress into the Northwest Territory, the Northwest Indian War began in 1785. By 1790, President George Washington, upset that no ground had been made in the taking of the Northwest Territory, commissioned Revolutionary War General Anthony Wayne to create a new army to bring the Northwest Indian War to an end. Wayne began marching his legion of more than 4,500 men north from Fort Washington near present-day Cincinnati, occasionally stopping to erect fortifications and then continue marching, leaving some men behind at each fort. By August 1794, Wayne and his men had pushed so far north that they had traversed almost the entire soon-to-be state of Ohio and were closing in on what is now Toledo. The warriors of the Northwest Confederation had regularly raided camps and settlements in the Northwest Territory, and the chiefs were confident that they could destroy any U.S. Army that dared to venture into the region. 
Prior to the Battle of Fallen Timbers, two earlier American military expeditions into the Northwest Territory failed to end the unrest. In fact, the Battle of the Wabash concluded with a Native American victory and heavy U.S. troop losses. Miami Chief Little Turtle, however, had noticed a shift in the combat tactics of this new army and asked the other chiefs to consider entering into negotiations with the U.S. But the natives had received assurances from their British allies at Fort Miamis that support would be provided against the Americans. So the Northwest Indian Confederation agreed to keep fighting. At this point, Chief Little Turtle ceded his command to Shawnee Chief Blue Jacket, who was more adept at warfare. Under Blue Jacket's direction, his army of some 1,500 warriors positioned themselves ahead of the U.S. anticipated path so that they could ambush the Americans. They found a clearing covered in fallen trees from a recent tornado and had chosen to take up a defensive position in hopes that the tree trunks would hinder U.S. troop movement. They were wrong. The Battle of Fallen Timbers began and ended quickly. U.S. scouts had detected activity in the clearing on August 19th. On August 20th, Wayne decided to proceed with his troops and Kentucky Volunteer Cavalry reinforcements toward the expected location of the Northwest Indian Army. A few hundred warriors had left the main fighting force to find food on the morning of the battle. They did not anticipate any troop movement so early. The remaining 1,100 warriors caught sight of the U.S. vanguard and attacked at approximately 9 a.m. After a few rounds of musket fire, General Wayne ordered his men to fix bayonets and charge, quickly overrunning the outnumbered warriors. As predicted, the Northwest Indians quickly retreated from their positions. Once the warriors had moved away from the fallen trees, General Wayne directed the Kentucky Cavalry to chase them down. The natives attempted to retreat to nearby Fort Miamis, but the British officers, who assured the natives their support, instead refused to let them in. With no other choice, the warriors surrendered and the Battle of Fallen Timbers was over. By the end of 1794, the U.S. government had reached an agreement with the British, ensuring the evacuation of Fort Miamis and all other forts in the Northwest Territory. In 1795, the U.S. and most of the Northwest Indian Confederation signed the Treaty of Greenville, which established the Northwest Territory as exclusively U.S. soil, and essentially paved the way for Ohio to become a state in 1803. Several chiefs, however, refused to sign the treaty and their defiance would come to haunt the United States at the beginning of the 19th century. The Battle of Fallen Timbers may have faded away into the history books, but apparently those who have fought there have not. The historic site regularly comes alive with the ghosts of soldiers and warriors reenacting the fight. The air is filled with yells and cries of men involved in a life or death struggle. Visitors walking the site have reported experiencing strange cold spots, catching quick glimpses of balls of light, and hearing whispering voices. So. It seems you have a chance year-round of encountering a ghost at Fallen Timbers. But the best time to visit is on the yearly anniversary of the battle, when the spirits are most restless and easiest to encounter. So beware, weary traveler. If you ever end up near Maumee, Ohio on August 20th, you might not believe your senses. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time as we explore more curious history. Take care.